we've got our fifth uh, message on the new level of prosperity. Prosperity is a good word. Amen. Amen. It is not a bad word in the kingdom of God. This is our fifth installment on this message and this series. And the series text comes out of Isaiah 54 and the second through the third verse. It's in our bulletin there. Isaiah, the 54th <coughs> chapter and the second through the third verse. And it says, it's out of the Living Bible translation. I kind of like that a little better. Enlarge your house, build on additions, spread out your home, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. And your descendants will possess the cities left behind during the exile and rule the nations that took their lands. And so that's, uh, that's the picture of prosperity to God. He wants us to get bigger. He wants us to grow. He wants our ministry to grow, but he also wants us to, to enlarge our places individually. Amen. That's how we all. That's how everything grows. We we individually grow. Enlarge your house. Build on addition. Spread out your home. For you will soon be bursting at the seams, and your descendants will possess the cities left behind during the exile and rule the nations that took their land. So we realize that God, He wants to take us to a new uh, to a new level of prosperity. And we, as uh, God's children, we have to, re we have to, this has to be anchored in our spirits and in our souls. Amen? Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's got to be anchored there. It's got to be anchored in our spirits and in our souls. In other words, our mind's got to be anchored. As our mind's got to be set on this. And then we look at our message text today. It comes out of Isaiah, the 26th chapter, and the third verse, out of the Amplified Classic Edition. And it says, you will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace. Pray, well, it, isn't that beautiful right there? I mean, that's some beautiful prosperity right there to be in continual and constant state of peace. Whose mind, both its inclination and its character is stayed on you because he commits himself to you, leans on you, and hopes confidently in you. And so we as God's children, we realize that God is our prosperity. Amen? And as we will commit ourselves to Him, as we will lean on Him, as we will place our confidence in God's Word, this, we, will be, we will rise to a new level of prosperity. We're going to rise. New, more pros, uh -huh. There's a lot of more prosperity that can be manifested in our lives. God, has, God wants to take us higher. And we've got to position ourselves so that he can take us higher. But it's up to us. We have to position our, we have to position ourselves for it. Now, when you look at this piece in the Hebrew, it says prosperity, prosperity. In other words, it says when you look at it, it uh, you will keep them in perfect peace. This perfect peace is translated in the Hebrew as prosperity. And not just once, it says prosperity twice. Prosperity, prosperity. So in other words, we realize that peace is our prosperity. That, peace, that prosperity is connected with peace. Amen? There's a perfect peace that God wants us to do. He wants us to keep our, 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 our mind on the word. In other words, if we will operate in this, if we will operate in this peace, we're going to have completeness. Son, it's like, just write this down. Amen. Praise God. If we operate in this shalom, if we operate in this peace, we're going to experience completeness. If we operate in this peace, we're going to experience prosperity and it's going to bring about completeness in our lives. Completeness. Comma soundness. Comma health. Comma contentment. Completeness. Comma soundness. Comma health. Comma contentment. And nothing missing and nothing broken. You will guard him and keep him in perfect and constant peace. It will bring about completeness. Comma soundness. Comma health. Comma contentment. And nothing missing, nothing broken. In other words, a shalom, perfect prosperity, prosperity. 
So we, as God's children, we want to operate in this higher level of prosperity, which means we're operating in a higher level of peace. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's look over here at, uh, and this, this, this peace that we're talking about, this prosperity is connected with our covenant. We are covenant people. We have a covenant with God through Jesus Christ. We're covenant people. And prosperity is connected with it. Let's turn over here to the book of Joshua. In the Old Testament. And it comes right after Deuteronomy. And we'll look at the first chapter there. Joshua, the first chapter, and we're going to look at the 6th through the 8th, well, through the ninth verse probably. We'll start at the 6th verse. Now, Moses had transferred at this point, and Joshua was the elected, was the new leader of Israel. And this was, this was God, what God had given to Joshua as, as the new leader of Israel. He said, be strong and of good courage. We have to have the joy of the Lord in our life. Because the joy of the Lord is our strength. We've got to have the joy of God in our life. I mean, We've got to watch over joy in our, in our lives. And stay in joy. And stay in peace. Be strong and of good courage. And you know, even in, we got to be spiritually strong. But we also got to be strong in our souls and be strong in our physical bodies. Well, that, that's about that prosperity, this completeness, this wholeness, this health as well as connected with it. That's part of our prosperity. Be strong and, and you know, and, and also too, we got to exercise. We've got to eat right and do those things to stay strong. I know even this morning before service, I put in 1.2 miles this morning and I already exercised even beyond that a little bit. You got it. You've got to stay after that. But it says, "Be strong and of good courage." We're talking about this new level of prosperity. We want to live in a new level of health, a new level of peace, a new level of joy. Be strong and of good courage, and we can't be afraid. We cannot uh, let fear come into our lives and into our hearts and minds. For to, to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. In other words, it is not by my, not by uh, might or power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. So it is the spirit of God that gives us the strength. And out of that flows power for us that we operate in. Only be strong and very. And you've got that when we know what is the right thing to do, we have to have the courage to do it. If the doctor says, you know, we need to exercise, we got to have the courage to get out of bed and go exercise. Be disciplined enough to do it. Or if God gives us direction to do something, we got to have the courage to exercise that and do that. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law, law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. So we've got to be strong and courageous to do the righteousness of God, what God's word said. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. If we will have the courage and the strength to do what God tells us to do, it's going to lead to our prosperity. Amen? Amen. Praise God. It's going to lead to our prosperity. That you may prosper wherever you go. Eighth verse. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. So what does that mean for us? We have to continually keep the word of God in our mouth. Amen? Amen. The word of God has got to stay in our mouth. That's what we got to be focusing on. But you shall meditate in it day and night. What are we meditating on? Are we meditating on something else? Are we meditating on the word of God? We're going to learn more about that in just a little bit. 
about meditation on the things of God. Day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. So as we meditate on the word that God gives us, that's going to, light's going to come from that, <coughs> and then we put action to it. Uh, for then you will make your way prosperous, and you will have good success. In other words, God's word is always going to lead to prosperity and success. If we'll meditate on it and do what it says do, it's always going to lead to prosperity and success in our lives. But who has control over that? We do. It is a choice that we make to do it or not to do it. Nine verse, have I not commanded you to be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Now Joshua's going to need this message. Because how many battles did Joshua fight? Many battles. <laughs> he needed this message here. <laughs> and do you think he might bring this out when he got one of them that on that tenth battle he's fighting with his guys? <laughs> Man, guys, we gotta be strong and courageous. God has given us the land. We got some fighting to do. And it was a lot of battles that Jericho, uh, that Joshua fought. We have to be single-minded on the word. Be single-minded on the word. So what does that mean? In other words, we got one focus, and our focus is the word. And as we focus on the word, more peace is going to come. More prosperity is going to come. Be single-minded on the word. And we got to watch what's coming out of our mouth. We don't, don't want to be murmurers. We don't want to be whiners. We don't want to be complainers. Confess the word of God only. Confess that only. Don't talk about that other foolishness and garbage. Confess the word of God only. As we will meditate on the word that God has given us, a vision will start to come. A vision will start to come. You know, we think about here, as we, as we think about Joshua, we think about these words of the Lord that came to us. We think about the word of the Lord that came to us in December 6th of 2015. God has desired that we're blessed beyond anything that we can think or imagine. It has not even entered into our mind how great the blessings God has in store for us. But God wants us to know this and reveal it to us. These blessings will be accessed and harvested into our life through obedience to the written and spoken word. This word of the Lord is anchored in Deuteronomy 28, 1 and 2. We think about the word that came on December 27th. I'm going to elevate you very high in the kingdom of God. I'm going to flood you with money. You're going to have all the resources you need. January 17th. The Lord wants to add some super to our natural. He wants to bring more of the supernatural into our lives. The Lord is going to advance our ministry decades into the future in a relatively short period of time. Amen. Amen. We, think about, we think about the double that was cleared over us on May 25th. I declared a double over you today. It's yours. Claim it. Double everything. Double finances. Double good health. Every good thing doubled up. Double peace. Double joy. So we know then that as God's children, we have to, uh, as it says here, 8th verse, the book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. We have to become single-minded. We have to confess the word of God over our lives. And out of that will come a vision. The Lord will give us a vision. He's giving us a vision. And this vision that the Lord gives us has to develop on the inside of us. As we'll meditate on the word, it will become a part of us. It'll, it'll become of our, part of our self-image. We have to spend time meditating on the word of God. As we'll meditate on the word of God that God gives us, we'll chew on it. We'll ponder on it. 
We'll set our mind on it. We'll set our our we'll 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 position ourselves toward it. That image will start to grow. That vision will start to grow. So that we can develop into the love of prosperity that God wants us to have. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And now I'm going to give you here. Let's look over here before I do that. Let's look over here at Psalms and the first chapter. Psalms, the first chapter of Psalms. And we're going to look at the first verse. Psalms, the first chapter and the first verse. We'll look at the first through the third verse. Psalms 1, 1 through 3. This is the way of the righteous. And that's the way we want to go. We want to go the way of the righteous. We're the righteous of God through Christ Jesus. It says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. We don't sit around and spend our time with ungodly people. This is the way of the righteous. If we know somebody who doesn't know God, maybe they could be a part of a cult. Or maybe they could have talked negative about our spiritual leader or people we know that are very are, are very good people. They're, we don't walk in their counsel. We don't spend time with them, matter of fact. What does the Bible say? Jesus said, or Holy Spirit said, come out and be separate. You separate from them. We don't sow into those people. It's not going to do that. Blessed is the man who don't walk. So what does that mean? If we walk in the counsel of godly, that opens the door to what in our lives? The curse. If we walk with the ungodly, that's not going to lead to prosperity. That's going to lead to decline and challenges and difficulty. Blessed is the man. This is the way of the righteous. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Those who just, do just constantly finding fault of people, of, 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 of spiritual leaders, and of they're just scornful of them. They just they can't, it, it's always some problem. They're not going to be hanging around with them. We're not going to do with them. We're going to come out and be separate from them. Because that's not, this is the way of the righteous. Second verse. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. That's where he finds his happiness. Not sitting around and spending time with unrighteous people, but in the word of God. That's where his happiness is found. It's in the word of God. In the house of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law, he meditates day and night. Well, if he does that, he'll bring... God will bring him godly people to fellowship with. Amen. Amen. Praise God. And what does it say? The outcome of this will be? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. In other words, if we won't sit around and connect ourselves with negative people, people who are unrighteous or people who are not trying to walk out God's plan in their life, it's gonna, and we'll, and we will focus on the word and what God says. Do we have a guarantee that we're going to prosper? And whatever He does will prosper. In other words, you'll enter into a new level of prosperity. A new level of prosperity will come. We got to apply the word of God to our own life. We got to deal wise in our affairs of life. And if we're doing this, this is going to position us to, to deal wisely in our affairs of life. And we can't be afraid or we can't be dismayed or discouraged to the point that we get off what God has called us to do. Because the devil will try to bring discouragement in and doubt and get us off of the mark. Uh, but we want to position ourselves that we receive. We want to harvest on these words that God has given us. We want to build them up in our hearts. We want to set our mind to them. We want to meditate, ponder them. Let the vision build inside of us and then start working toward that vision. I'm going to give you some things here to write down. 
I'm going to give you seven points to write down here as we, as we work on closing here. Fundamentals of meditation. You can title these the fundamentals of meditation. I know it's meditating on God's word. Fundamentals of meditating on God's word. The fundamentals of meditating on God's word. And here's an overall statement before I give you the seven points. Meditation is fixing your mind on the word. Meditation is fixing your mind on the word. Meditation is fixing your mind on the word. Now here's step number one. I'm going to give you seven steps to meditating God's word. Number one. Apply the word to you personally. As we take the word into our hearts and our lives, we want to try to apply the word to our, the word of God to our life personally. Apply the word of God to you personally. Apply the word to you personally. Number two. Number two, allow the Holy Spirit to make God's word a reality in your heart. Allow the Holy Spirit to make God's word a reality in your heart. <coughs> allow the Holy Spirit to make God's word a reality in your heart. Number three, carefully ponder, carefully ponder how this word applies to your life. Carefully ponder how this word applies to your life. Carefully ponder how this word applies to your life. Number four. Number four. Dwell on how, dwell on how this word from the Lord changes your situation. Dwell on how this word from the Lord changes your situation dwell on how this word from the Lord changes your situation dwell on how this word from the Lord changes your situation number five place yourself in agreement Number five, place yourself in agreement. Place yourself in agreement with what God's word says about you. Number six, see yourself as God sees you. See yourself as God sees you. Number six, see yourself as as God sees you. Number six, see yourself as God sees you. And finally, number seven, begin to realize, begin to realize the integrity of God's word. Begin to realize the integrity of God's word. In other words, begin to realize the integrity of God's word. In other words, God's word is true and it's going to perform its intended purpose. Let's look over here at Isaiah. And in Isaiah uh, 55, and we'll close on this. Isaiah 55.
And we'll close on this. Isaiah 55. And we'll look at Isaiah 55 and 10. And 11. Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. And it says here, Isaiah 55, 10 and 11. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing which I sent it. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. In other words, unfulfilled, empty. But it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So we have to, in other words, the word of God has become, begin to realize the integrity of God's word. It's going to perform its purpose. If we will, and we focus on this morning on meditating the word to help us get to our next level of prosperity. We got to meditate the word. In other words, we got to apply the word to us, how to apply the word to our life personally. Allow the Holy Spirit to make God's word a reality in our hearts. Carefully ponder how the word applies to our life. Dwell on how this word from the Lord changes our situation. Place ourselves in agreement with what God's word says about us. See ourselves as God sees us. Begin to realize the integrity of God's word. God's word is, is integrity. And it's going to fulfill its purpose. We have to build it up in our hearts. Set our minds to it, ponder it, set our affection on it. Let that image build up inside us. Let that vision, and then as God gives us light, start action to get to that vision fulfilled. Amen?